Like it was really weird, like the first time I met him, you know, the first time I met Greg. It was really strange because like, <clears throat> I was just like walking down the street, you know, and like I come up to this guy, you know, and it was like I knew him, you know, and it was Greg, you know, and it was like deja vu, you know, it was really strange. And so I walk up to him, you know, and I said like, don't I know you or what, you know, and he said, get the hell away from me, you know, like he was really ticked off about it. And you know it was weird? Oh, you know it was really weird? It was like one time we went out to the beach, you know? And like we went to the, you know, we smoked a joint together. And it was like really strange because like he really freaked out or something, you know? Like I said the wrong thing or something, you know? I don't know what it was, but it was like really strange because like he put his hand, you know, around my throat, you know? Like he was going to choke me. And he was choking me. And I said like, what are you doing, you know? And he said, I'm trying to kill you. And like I said, well, you know, why? And he said, because I hate your guts, you know? And it was like really weird. So I, you know, I just went into one thing. I said, well, could I ask you one question? You know, like, are you my friend or what? You know? And that's the last thing I remember. You see the thing about Greg, and I, I noticed that he was also a manic depressive psychopath, which creates an interesting and bizarre character. I mean, you have a manic depressive psychopath paranoid schizophrenic it's very very unusual mm -hmm. he would come into my office and say hello dr howell and i would say hello greg and he would put up a wall and that would be the end of it he put up walls all around me and that's what happened to me carl jung once said if your patient's going to put up walls you better break them down quick if not they'll trap you and they'll run that's what he did he put up four walls around me he ran out of the office and i was stuck there for a year you want to talk about Greg Travis, I guess, hell, I know him better than anybody. Because we grew up together, you know. We was always doing something crazy. I remember remember one time out in, uh, in the barn hauling hay, and Greg turned over to me and he said, By God, I'll tell you one thing, dog head. We'll get through stacking this hay in this barn. By God, we'll be done with it. <laughs> I mean, to me, that's funny. <laughs> but uh, we was always saying something like that. I remember one time we was driving in, in the truck, and uh, Greg turned over to me and he said, if I got a dog head and we get there, we'll be there. <laughs> I mean, to me, you know, that's, he's really saying something, you know, because you can't argue with him. But uh, he's always saying something like that, you know. I remember one time as me, Billy Bob Jr. and Greg were all out, and we was out shooting 22s, and Greg gets a big idea to shoot at each other. Say, let's shoot at each other, see how close we can come. Well, shoot. I mean, I'm no fool. So anyway, we got shooting at each other there, and pretty near there soon, Greg shot Billy in the ear. Shot his little piece of ear off fire. Well, of course, Billy got mad, you know, and they nearly killed each other before that was over. But uh, I remember one time, it was funny, we got, it, we was all out in the boys. It was me, Billy Bob Jr., Jamie Jr., Greg, and the whole bunch was out, and Junior Jr., and we got so damn drunk that we couldn't see straight. And Greg got sick and started throwing up on everybody and everything. I mean, he just, I mean, he's come over to somebody and they say, don't throw up on me, you know. He'd throw up on them anyway. He's just sick, you know. But it's funny. It's real funny. You know, we all laughed about it later because he's, he's throwing up on everything, you know. It's real funny. So, you want to know about Greg Travels, do you? All I know about him is that he used to open, I think it was uh, 1970 or, I don't, I don't remember. It was a long time ago when I was, I used to be the lead singer of the dogs, you know. I was the lead singer for the dogs. And uh, Greg Travis used to open as a comedian for the dogs, you know. But it was very difficult, it was very difficult indeed to open for the dogs. As a matter of fact, it was difficult being the dogs. <laughs> But it was very difficult opening because he used to come off, you know, and the people, the people didn't want the comedy, you know. They said, we don't want you, we want the dogs, you know, and they wanted, I was the lead singer for the dogs, you know. And the people just didn't want the comedy. He would, uh, he would go on and try to make them laugh, you know, but they never, they never laughed. They didn't, they didn't think it was funny. They didn't want that, so they wanted the dogs, you know. And he would come off stage and he would say, David, what's my name, David? He would say, David, they don't want me. I said, Greg, you know, I know, I know. And he said, but I'm going to do it anyway. He said, I'm going to be funny. I'm going to do it. And he did, you know, he did it. He wanted to. He did 
Yeah. He wanted to be a comedian, so he did. But uh, they never liked him, you know. It's, uh, it was really strange. They wanted the dogs. The people said, we want the dogs, you know. We want the dogs. We don't want you. Get off. Get off. We don't want you. We want the dogs. But I'm going to tell you something about rock and roll today. Rock and roll today is especially the punk rock. The punk rock is a bastardization of rock and roll. It's a bastardization. You don't, you don't need it. It's filth. It's trash. It's bastardization. And I don't want to talk to you anymore, so get out of my house. Yeah, like there was... There was always this great power struggle between me and Greg. I don't know, it was really strange. It was like there was a lot of, a lot of animosity, you know? I don't know, it was, like, it was like he had really bad vibes for the time that we were going together. It was really weird. He was really funny, though. I always enjoyed his sense of humor. It was like, it was like his aura was always changing, you know? It was really weird. One thing about Greg is like, you never could read him. I mean, he was so, he was so different all the time. It was like really hard to understand. It was like, it was like the old saying, you know, you can look at a strawberry all day, but you don't know what it tastes like until you eat it. Well, that's the way Greg was. Well, of course, you know, Greg was a Leo. Well, when you talk about Greg Travis, you have to talk about a sensitive artist, which he is. And I think like all true artists, he has a right to be sensitive. I mean, he's an artist and uh, what he does is art, if you want to call it that. I don't think it's very funny, but I think he's a very sensitive person. I touched him, he jumped. <laughs> he's very sensitive. But Greg is very strange in a way that I don't think he's very funny. I've seen his act and I, I've seen him do this, what he does on stage, but it's just, it doesn't appeal to me personally. However, I've seen other people like it and they, they enjoy it. And I guess that's what's important. I know Greg enjoys it. He always enjoys it. He, he loves himself. He, he thinks it's so funny. But I guess that's good. Like really weird, you know, because uh, I knew Greg when like he first came out to Hollywood. You know, we used to play pool together down at Mason's Bar, and we really weird. You know, we would play pool together. He was, you know, he was really bad on pool. You know, I mean, you know, he wasn't good. He was bad. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> but it was all right. I mean, you know, we played pool. We would drink a lot together. It was all right. He's good, you know, he's real good. He's all right. He's crazy. You know he's crazy, don't you? He was always doing something crazy. Like, one time we was, uh, we had a roulette wheel in the back room, you know? <laughs> and uh, everybody used to play pool, I mean, roulette back there. And it was, uh, you know, it was something to do. And so uh, one time we was back there and he was playing roulette with us and he threw up in the roulette wheel, you know? So it was like, uh, Nobody would play on him, you know, on the roulette wheel after that, because, like, you know, the smell was bad. <laughs> the smell was real bad. <laughs> but he was, you know, it was all right. You know, I don't know what, you know, else to say about him. I didn't know him that well, you know. I did know him, though, you know. But uh, not that good, you know. I knew him, but not that, you know, real well. But he was all right, yeah. Is that all, like, you want me to say, you know? <laughs> And let's go smoke a joint, motherfucker. <laughs> That's all right. Is that? What's happening? What you want me to do?